Hi, so I started a, uh, a playlist on team coaching and I never really continued it. So I'm going to do one continued video on that. Um, I'm going to start with most of the positive aspects, um, just so we get started on the right foot. Uh, I might rearrange it later on. Uh, the, the dominant aspect of team coaching that's supposed to make it superior to non-team coaching, and, and I'll get through some of the peripherals, which are actually, I think, more valid arguments. But the dominant argument is that if you have three or four coaches that are working together, and you have a coach that wants to focus on, um, you know, skater development, organization jumps, uh, quality, um, and they hire another coach to do spins, and they hire, or they hire another coach to do choreography, or a fourth coach to do stroking dance skills, presentation, something like that. The theory is that, um, what's it called, specialization? The theory is that because the head coach isn't worrying about everything, they're just worrying about jumps and overall um, presentation, that they're going to get better at teaching that, and they're going to become more of an expert, more of a... Um, a specialist in being able to do that. Same with the spin coach. If they're doing spins all the time with all the students most of the time, um, they're going to theoretically increase their ability to coach spins uh, and, and get better results from skaters on spins faster than if they were trying to divide their focus between a whole bunch of different things. Um, so specialization, I would say, is, is the dominant argument for why team coaching is supposed to basically be superior to individual coaching. Um, well, I might as well poke the holes in that right away. There are two main reasons. There are several dangers to this, but there's also one main reason why this doesn't quite work the way it's supposed to. Um, there are some people who are just better at coaching and better at getting ideas through to kids in a variety of ways, better at setting uh, expectations and goal setting in such a way that kids want to progress faster and have more of a, you know, they feed their appetite a little more, their, their uh, appetite to want to skate better more. And just because you hire one person and tell them they're the spin coach, and have them specialize on spins for years, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are going to be better at spins than another coach or another coach or yourself. Um, that's really the real problem with uh, uh, team with the specialization argument of team coaching, is if you take four mediocre coaches. Um, and have them each specialize in a different area of skating and work together versus one super good coach. Uh, um, those four coaches will never produce the product of the one good coach. Um, that's the big problem I have with team coaching. Um, the, the other, eh, I'll go into that later, but the problem I have with specialization is I'm very good at teaching everything on ice. So I have a big problem giving up hiring someone else to do my spins, my jumps, my choreography, my jump lessons, uh, uh, my stroking lessons, my dance lessons, my skills lessons, um, if I know I can do those things better. I mean, there is, uh, there are other arguments, but as far as specialization goes, it, it becomes a real problem if you don't hire someone who you know either is more competent than you at teaching spins, as an example, now, or someone who's close enough to you at teaching spins that within a year, two years, three years, they will be, your kids will be able to do spins as well as they would have if you had taught them. Um, And in the process of that coach taking over spins and doing spins for you and eventually getting your, their, your kids to the point where they're doing as good spins as they would have done with you, <clears throat> it frees up your time to do something else uh, if your time is, is, is valuable in some respect. Um, personally, I find specialization a very, very questionable uh, benefit of team coaching because... Um, 
it, well, for the reasons I just said, it's very hard to find someone who um, is going to teach something much better or much more uh, on the same trajectory of excellence that you would have, that I would have. Um, now, in the argument I used earlier, if you have four mediocre coaches who band together and specialize, it is probably true that the four of them, having specialized their resources, specialized their focus, are going to get better results with their students than any one of those would have had individually with a student. So if one of those mediocre coaches had attempted to teach spins, jumps, dance, and scales all together, um, they would probably have mediocre results, mediocre coach, mediocre results. If you, um, if that person just focuses on jumps and has three other people focus on the other things, likely they'll be, they'll definitely become better at teaching jumps than they would have otherwise, which means their kids will have, um, you know, a little bit of a leg up on jumps than, than they would have had with that coach normally. This really isn't coming up very clear. Um, but then the question becomes, does your spin coach get good enough that it warrants you not teaching spins anymore? Does your dance coach get good enough? I mean, it becomes a, a real hassle to try to manage all four people um, and trust your team. Anyway, that's it. That's good enough. That's long enough.